I want to show you, I said this to Jen, I mean, at some point, you really have to question, is it just that these multimillionaire anchors are morons? Or are they just intentionally lying? So let's look, let's look at Chuck Todd this morning on Meet the Press. I mean, it's a mess. Grab, grab, grab the popcorn. I think the, the biggest challenge right now is with Bernie Sanders, I think the, the question is that he will grow that electoral base that the Democrats desperately need will in he? order to win. I think he'll, he'll bring in the young people. But did the he? Challenge. He hasn't yet. But no, he, no, he, he in has. This, in this, so far? I mean, he, youth turnout went down, not up. No, but they actually, but you actually saw in Iowa, you actually saw a, a constituency of the mm -hmm. Latino vote, and you actually saw a constituency of young African American votes actually outperform. That is where the new base is coming from. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up. And kudos to that guest. I think her name is Maria Teresa Kumar. So Chuck Todd, I don't know how much he makes. I'm pretty sure he makes at least five, six million dollars uh, a year. Uh, to do propaganda for NBC and MSNBC. You would think as part of that millions of dollars of a year has to have his facts right, has to actually study politics, has to do some research. So Chuck Todd, Chuck Todd says, well, you know, Bernie's not bringing out. Bernie's not bringing out the youth. Well, that's just a lie. It's just not true. Bernie Sanders brought out 24%, 24% of voters in Iowa were age 17 to 29. That is, I guess some are Gen Z and some are millennials. 17 to 29, 24% of Iowa caucus voters were 17 to 29. They over, overwhelmingly supported Bernie Sanders compared to in 2008, when Barack Obama was running, it was 22% of the electorate was age 17 to 29. You might think, oh, an increase of two, two points, that's not, not a big deal. It is a big deal, and I'll tell you why. And this is the stuff the corporate media will never actually provide you. It's called context. So Bernie Sanders brought out 24% of the electorate in Iowa was 17 to 29, compared to 2008. 22% uh, of the electorate was age 17 to 29. Guess what? In 2008, there was even, there was uh, advantages in terms of more young people coming out that did not exist this time around. What were those advantages? In 2008, the Iowa caucus was held in the beginning of January. College students were home for their winter break. It was right in the, I think it was January 3rd. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure the Iowa caucus was January 3rd in 2008. So you had college students home, by the way. So this time around, college students were back in college. So 22% in 2008, that that was par partly, yes, more young people came out because of the friggin', uh, you know, just quicksand that George W. Bush left this country in. But they were home, they could vote, they weren't back at college yet. Secondly, this time around in 2020, the Iowa caucus was held the day after the Super Bowl and college students were away. So there were advantage there were reasons there were reasons this time around that that number should not have surpassed 2008. So it surpassed 2008 without the built in advantage of young college students from Iowa being home without this, you know again the Super Bowl was held the day before you might have some people that, you know, not feeling so great uh, the next day after, you know, hanging out, drinking a couple at Super Bowl parties, whatever. So Bernie Sanders brought out more youth voters, yet Chuck Todd just lies to the American people. It's unbelievable. But that's not the only lie that Chuck Todd told today. That's not the only lie. Time Bernie Sanders may have eked out the most votes in Iowa and New Hampshire. But if you look at the numbers more closely, it shows a candidate hitting a ceiling for now, rather than a glide path to the nomination. In both states, Sanders garnered well, almost the same percentage 1, of the vote. Check this out, 26.5 and 25.6% respectively. Compared with Buttigieg, earning similar amounts as well. Now Sanders can blame the large field of candidates, but Donald Trump got 35% in New Hampshire in 2016 in a similarly crowded field. 
Sanders often makes the case for enthusiasm. That is, people are more fired up, and he's better able to bring new voters into the fold as a result. Well, if you look at the combined percentages among the centrist candidates, they do much better than the progressives, earning 51% of the vote in Iowa and 52% in New Hampshire. Then there's turnout. Tuesday's New Hampshire primary broke the record set in 2008 with an 18% increase in overall turnout compared with four years ago, but a decline in the groups that tend to support Sanders. The amount of 18 to 29 year old voters was down 5% on Tuesday night compared to when Sanders swept the Granite State in 2016. And the amount of very liberal voters was down the same amount compared to 2016 as well. Those kinds of numbers do not favor the Sanders campaign and actually, it could just, just get tougher. Iowa and New Hampshire were near perfect places for Sanders to flex his progressive muscle. Both were states he'd organized in before, one being next door to his home of Vermont. But there are very few other contests with as friendly of electorates to Sanders as those two first two states of Iowa and New Hampshire. So I love how Chuck Todd and these corporate media people, they... The only thing they could do, because Bernie Sanders winning, they have to have a narrative for why Bernie Sanders winning is actually losing, right? So I just showed you that he lied about the youth turnout. Uh, it was down in New Hampshire. There could be a lot of reasons for why it was down in New Hampshire, but it was up significantly in Iowa. Overall turnout, by the way, in New Hampshire was up significantly. The corporate media, what can they do? If Bernie's winning, they have to come up with a reason he's losing. So they're doing this creative thing where they say, well, Bernie and Warren, their support equals whatever it was in that segment, let's say 50%, excuse me, let's say uh, 46%, I'm making it up, I don't remember what it was in that, but if you group Biden, Klobuchar, and Buttigieg together, it's greater, the support for them is greater than the support for Bernie and Warren. Okay. Let's explain why this is total bullshit. First of all, first of all, it doesn't matter what the total percentage of voters for the losing candidates are compared to the winning candidate. It really doesn't matter. So, yeah, sure, you could do creative math and say, well, Biden, Klobuchar, and Buttigieg, their total is greater than Bernie and Warren. But that's not how elections work. Secondly, if you actually want to be fair, which they don't, you would group in Tulsi Gabbard's percentage with Bernie and Warren. You would group in Andrew Yang's percentage, even though it wasn't much, with Bernie and Warren. So you would group in Tom Steyer's percentage, which is closer to Bernie and Warren. So they don't want to be fair. Secondly, secondly, Chuck Todd and these other corporate Stoop, uh, these other corporate hacks that are trying to make it seem, well, there's greater moderate support than there is progressive support. They just assume that all of Amy Klobuchar's voters, all of Joe Biden's voters, all of um, Pete Buttigieg's voters are, are, are moderates. Well, all you have to do, all you have to do is just look at second choices for the polls. Biden supporters... Their top second choice is Bernie Sanders. 28% of Biden supporters. Their second choice, Bernie Sanders. Uh, obviously lesser when you go to Buttigieg, but 17% of Buttigieg supporters. Second choice, Bernie or Warren. Uh, they don't have, uh, Morning Consult doesn't have the numbers for Klobuchar, but as you can see, Elizabeth Warren, second choice. Uh, no, this is, where's Warren? Warren, Bernie Sanders, 35% of her supporters have Bernie Sanders as their second choice. So in Chuck Todd's world, you just add up Biden, Klobuchar, and um, Buttigieg, and that equals greater support for the moderates than Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren has. But if you have no Joe Biden... By the numbers, his his voters, a lot of them, are going to Bernie Sanders. Uh, if you, Klobuchar, probably not. Buttigieg, a lot of his voters going to Bernie or Warren. So it's just intellectually dishonest what they're trying to do. They're trying to do this voodoo math 
to try and make it seem, well, there's more moderate support. Well, by the way, by the way, since I was on the ground in New Hampshire and Chuck Todd was not, these, these people make multi-millions of dollars a year. I think he makes four or five million dollars a year to do this kind of propaganda. I make, I don't know, I can't do fractions, maybe 0.01% of that. I was on the ground, thanks to you. I could tell you a lot of Pete Buttigieg supporters like Bernie Sanders. They voted for Pete Buttigieg because they were told he won the Iowa caucus. That's what led them to actually go to his events. I spoke with a lot of his supporters online outside of his event, the one where they harassed my my, my cameraman. Why this is important, what they're trying to do is brainwash you. What they're trying to do is make it seem, don't believe your lying eyes. There isn't a progressive surge going on. There, the, the mood of the country is not moving left. The mood of the country is center right or center left. No, it's not. The truth is, if Joe Biden is not in this race, a lot of his voters are going to Bernie. The truth is, if Pete is not in this race, a lot of his voters are going to Bernie. Amy, probably not because she's basically a Republican. But no, you can't just add up the losing candidates' percentages and then say, oh, you know, there's more moderate support. Uh, for There's more moderate support. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as 5 to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. <laughs>